It is a monster and they do kick. They really do kick. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with two very powerful, but very, very different crossbows. So we've got clearly a modern compound bow here. And then we have got one of my medieval windlass crossbows here, lent to me by Scalagrim actually, um, doing some maintenance on it. Thank you very much, Scal. If you don't know him, link in the notes. Now then, let's go shoot them, see what's going on with them, because they are very, very different. Back at the range now, and first up with the medieval 960 pound windlass crossbow. So this is, you know, pretty much a state of the art object around 1400. Just gonna set the trigger. And this, just like the modern bow, needs a draw assist for it. In the case of this one, it is absolutely essential because there is no way anyone is drawing a 960 pound crossbow. Oh, it is a monster and they do kick. They really do kick. And the other thing, that's really quite noticeable about them is the ring in your ears. Now people say, oh, well, you know, it's nothing like a gun. You're right, it's nothing like a gun. It is different. I don't know why it's different, but it really makes my ears ring. Usually I'd wear ear protection for something like this, but two shots, I figure it's all right. But you know, don't kid yourself. These things have got a lot of pent up power in them. Just gonna fully unwind the string there because otherwise it makes it very difficult for the next shot. Oh, oh goodness me. Lovely. So it's just shooting a little bit to the right. I'll move the bow next time I shoot. Right, let's get the modern one, see how that behaves. Next up, 150 pound modern compound crossbow with the draw assist. So this is in fact, exactly the same as an old style doubler pulley. Even with that, not totally easy, but a lot faster than the windlass. Oh, blimey, didn't even see that go. Oh, right, here we go again. It's easy to get these things tangled, actually. In many respects, it's a bit like the windlass. You've got to sort of learn how to look after them. Well, two observations that there are to be made straight away. The windlass bow is just a much heavier object. Even with the windlass on it, it's a real chunk. Take the windlass off, you're still holding a lot of weight out there. And you know, it's a long bow. There's a lot of leverage with a lot of weight at the front. Very little balance it at the back. This is a lot handier and it's so much faster. You can hear that between the release and the land on target is so much faster. You know, that's just apparent here shooting it. But of course, that also means the trajectory is much flatter as well. Awesome bit of kit. I mean, these sort of modern bows are awesome objects. They really are. But don't forget, these are state-of-the-art 2021. They're not state-of-the-art 1400. That's what the windlass bow was. I thought I'd show you those two shots just really as a, an interesting point because those two bolts are touching at uh, 20 meters, 20 yards. Medieval bows are my thing, not really modern ones, and I'm not used to this bow at all. But just because you haven't got sights, and I say it again and again, doesn't mean you can't shoot accurately. And I don't even shoot that much, nowhere near the way that a professional crossbowman would have done in the Middle Ages sometime. Well, what did I learn today? Well, these are separated by 600 years, and it feels it, it feels it. This one is heavy. It kicks mightily as much as anything, not just because of the power pent up in it, although it is a lot of power pent up in it. It kicks because of the mechanism of it. It's got so much steel flying forward that it has to react. The bolt itself is also heavy. You know, these ones coming in that I was shooting here were 67 grams, I think they were. And actually they go up to sort of like 85 or 90 generally for a bow like this. So those were quite light ones. This here is very small, very agile, easy to load relatively fast to load, accurate, flat. You know, it's everything you could ever want in a crossbow. But of course, this one here, state of the art for 1400, is part of an arms race. 
the concept of an arms race is not just a modern thing between the East and the West. It's as old as time. And you had knights and men at arms trying to not get struck by the missiles. And you had the people at the other end shooting the missiles trying to get the knights and men at arms. And that's why you end up with bows at £1,000 in draw weight. Unwieldy, but it does the job that you need it to do. And that's really competing at a level, roughly speaking, with longbows. That's not what these sort of modern bows are about. What we're going to do is take our 23 gram bolt for the modern bow and our 67 gram bolt for the medieval bow. We're going to shoot them, put them through a chronograph, take some numbers down, make some calculations, and we'll just have a look at that and see what that can tell us about the two different bows. Back with the modern bow, let's put it through the chronograph, see what numbers we get. All right, let's see what we get. Whoa, 365, 357, Ooh. 360. Right, so let's call it 360. That'll do for these numbers. Back for the medieval one. 67 gram bolts with this one. Whew. 179, quite a difference, but quite a difference in weight that it's shooting too. And with the difference in weight comes the difference in momentum. Hundred and eighty one. Hundred and eighty three. Last bolt we're going to shoot is this one here. It's actually one I use for test weights when I'm trying to work out the, the weight of a head that I want. I don't have any bulkin heads with me at the moment, but that's ninety grams. Hundred and sixty seven and that was blunt, it's still gone through half inch plywood, twelve mil plywood. I'm back from the range now and I've done some calculations. So I've taken the bolt speeds and I've done the numbers on them to get uh, energy and momentum. Because the two are important, but they're different. Okay? Here's my little table. I'm gonna read that out now, but it'll also be in the notes in both Imperial and in metric. Just gonna talk in metric now. We're gonna start with our modern bow. So here it is, 150 pounds in draw weight and it delivered our 23 gram bolt at 110 meters per second. Now that's pretty fast. 139 joules of energy, 2.53 of momentum. Right, okay, all sounds good. 139 joules, that's, you know, that's a reasonable amount. That's heading towards a 2-2 long rifle round. So, you know, you are getting towards the energy that a bullet has, or a small bullet. And now to our monster bow. So this is a 67 gram bolt, 56 meters a second, so half of the modern bow there. So it's not a great surprise that the energy is down. It's 104 joules, but the momentum is 3.7. So it's significantly higher than the modern bow shooting the modern bolts behind us. Now, I heard a great phrase years ago when I was discussing this, and that is that energy is the messenger, momentum is the message. Now, as most people who are involved with firearms will tell you, momentum is really what counts when it comes to penetration. So it's interesting that the momentum is higher. But then, if we look at the bodkin weight bolt that I shot there, a 90 gram bolt, the velocity is down again. Well, you'd expect that because the, the mass is up. 51 meters a second, but that's now producing 117 joules of energy. But it gives us a momentum of 4.6. Of course, there's a difference between the speed of shooting of longbows and crossbows. And they are different things for different times and in different social structures. And that is videos, many of them, about that. We're not talking about longbows, but just as an example, this is a speed trial I ran between myself and Joe Gibbs a couple of years ago. You can really clearly see the difference between the two. And you might walk away wondering why anybody would ever want to shoot a crossbow. It's complicated, but people did. 
We're going to have a look at what's going on now with these two bows. We've got a medieval one, 960 pounds in draw weight. We've got a modern one, 150 pounds in draw weight. So this is 800 pounds more. It is six times the power of this one or the pent up energy. And that is a mistake that we've got to be careful not to make because people again and again, they see the headline number 960 pounds. And like I referred to at the beginning of the film, that looks like it's going to shoot through a tank or something. They just don't. Why don't they? Well, we're going to have a look at this, the layout of it, how it all functions and compare it to this one. So starting with the medieval bow, let's start. Now, starting at the front of the bow here, it's made of steel. Steel is very heavy. That means that there's a lot of inertia. It's a lot of resistance to moving when you pull it back and then you let go of it. That resistance to moving means that you're not accelerating the bolt. You're not putting the work that you've put in into moving the bolt. You're putting that work, a lot of the work, into moving the steel bow. That's inefficient. The other thing about it is, and this is about technical, is the inertia goes up as uh, a cube law from the center of rotation. What that means is this bow, it's a bit difficult to move. If I make it just a little bit longer, it's actually a hell of a lot harder to move. And so the thing is, you can't make it that much bigger. This is kind of about as big as you want a steel bow to be, really. So its, it's overall draw length has to be relatively limited. But that aside, I read a paper recently where somebody had analyzed a bow which was forge welded from over 40 different pieces of steel. Any one of those forge welds can give up. And then, you know, if that breaks, it wraps a kilo of steel around the side of your head. So the nature, what you do by nature, is you make the draw length short. I'm almost certain that's why the, the draw length on these medieval bows is so short. But a short draw length is just inefficient. So everything about the bow is not that great. It's compared to modern materials. I'm, you know, it sounds like I'm dissing this bow. This is state of the art for 1400. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Modern terms, not so much. The string itself, it's got to be thick to take the 960 pounds of, of load on it. But it's natural fiber. That means a thick cord here is heavy. Again, you're putting the work of the bow into accelerating the whole mechanism, not the bolt. That's what you want. So if you look at the system here, yes, it's a very high draw weight. And what you need to remember with all of these things, and I've said it before so many times, it's not the headline number. 960 pounds, wow, that is amazing. That is gonna shoot through walls, it's gonna shoot through tanks. No, it doesn't, because the efficiency is low. The draw length is low. All the mass in this entire system is very high. It doesn't want to move. So overall, these machines are really powerful, but they are not as efficient, not remotely as efficient as a modern bow. So we're just going to swap over now to the modern one. Now this, of course, has been designed to overcome so many of the problems that the old style crossbows had. So the string is gossamer thin, you know, Kevlar, Dacron, whatever it is. Very low weight. So that makes it efficient. These bow limbs themselves, carbon fibre and glass fibre, very low weight, very fast to return once you release them. So their efficiency is very, very high. They're short. That means that the inertia related to the, the cube law, the distance from the centre of rotation, is much lower in itself than the, the longer steel-limbed bows. This compound system means that the bow itself also doesn't move as much as, as a single, uh, single string bow does, conventional bow it's a much shorter displacement on the limb tips. Again, much less inertia to the whole system. And then on top of all of that, what you've got is these clever cam systems on the end here. So somebody has analyzed this spring and how it behaves, and they've allowed the power to come in at the right point so that the whole system is efficient as possible. And then on top of all of that, you have now got a crazy long draw length. It's not the six inches, the uh, 150 millimeters, of the medieval bow. This one is now 14 inches, 350 millimeters. That makes it far more efficient as well. So the two things are just entirely different beasts. It come at utterly different directions of their design. The medieval one is just iterative, really from late Roman times. The same system has been developed again and again, just getting more and more powerful. Some point in the late 60s, early 70s, compound technology was invented for bows and the world changed.
With a modern bow, we've got much higher energies, but lower momentum. And it's converse with the medieval bow. Now, what does that mean in a practical sense? Well, I alluded to it earlier on when I used that cryptic phrase that energy is the messenger, momentum is the message. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, the energy is great. That gets you to the target, gets you there quickly. It gets you a long way. And you can see that with the modern bow. But it doesn't aid penetration that much. What you want for penetration is momentum. And you see that again and again with, uh, with bullets particularly. But it's the same true of arrows, particularly because the arrow actually is really good at conserving its momentum because it doesn't break up, it doesn't mushroom, it doesn't expand uh, like the bullets do. And I showed that very conclusively, I think, in the sandbag film that I did a few films ago, where the heavyweight arrows are just flying through those sandbags and actually the lightweight bolts weren't. For those of you unfamiliar with the Lockdown Longbow films, I have a whole series of them on this channel here that I've been doing recently, where I take a medieval weight, medieval style arrow, I shoot it off a compound bow. Yes, it's a modern bow, but it shoots these arrows at the same speed, the same velocity that my friend Joe Gibbs does off his 160 pound English longbow, English war bow. So the thing is, the target does not care what is shooting it. It is the arrow and the velocity and the speed that matters. And so you see that again and again with those films, how effective this is. Momentum, that is what is counting with that. And it's not what you get off the modern bow. And this brings me to one final point. The real conclusion of this film is if I was a crossbow archer in the year 1400, which bow would I choose? Would it be the 1400 state-of-the-art crossbow, the 960 pound Bearmouth, or would it be the modern one? Well, I can tell you now, that speaks to my soul. That is the sort of object I like. I like the materials, I like the look, I like the feel of it, I like making it, I like using it. It's not the one I'd choose, and I'm gonna explain now why I'd choose this one. And very simply, the answer is flexibility. Because a bow like this will shoot the lightweight bolts 350 meters, maybe even more, uh, which is fantastic for harrying troops at a distance. Pinpoint accuracy at closer ranges as well. So that is enormously useful. You cannot shoot lightweight bolts off a bow like that medieval, medieval one behind me. It will just kill the string very, very rapidly. So that is not an option. So what you have to do with the medieval one is you shoot the heavy bolt. You don't get the distance, but what you get is the inertia which does the damage to the targets that the lightweight bolts don't do. But again and again, I have demonstrated with the Lockdown Longbow films that it can shoot these medieval well, longbow bolts, if you want to call them that. Devastating power, as far as the crossbow is concerned. And really, they would have loved for that. They would have killed for it. They would have killed with it. And there we have a tale of two bows. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's enlightened you. And if it did, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, purchasing our t-shirts or going to the web shops is a brilliant way to help support what we do here. Thank you. <laughs>